What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today with more Railroads Online and today I wanted to run some cordwood to the smelter. We just connected up to the smelter in the last episode and uh, I've been running some plank cars. We do have a little bit of money, $2,600, but we need a whole different car to transport cordwood. So I wanted to buy, I think, six of those to start just because we're going to load them up at the logging camp and bring them downhill, which, you know fully loaded down a hill. I'm not sure how that's going to go and we don't want to accidentally have them run away. And then we have to build the actual parking spot for the cordwood cars at the smelter. You'll see what I mean when we get to the smelter. It's a little bit weird where you have to drop off cordwood. But first thing we're going to do is just buy some cars. So let's go to the locomotives. Flat car tier one. See flat car tier two. We have tier one and tier two. Lumber, raw iron, rail, and beam for this one. Tier three, cordwood and oil barrels. So these are the ones we need and we're going to buy six of them. So that's one. And then I think we have to buy each one literally individually. All right, perfect. All of our cordwood cars. These look kind of cool. So we'll run six of them down there. We'll see how that goes. Uh, I'm just going to turn off the brake on the front cars. Because we're just going to push the front cars into the back cars to link all this up. It'll be a little bit easier that way. The brake's off on this one as well. Excellent. And then we'll put some links on. So we just link link and pin and link and pin perfect this is just to get everything prepped up and then we'll go pin 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 and then on the back of this one we'll start on the left and go all the way to the right so we'll link and pin this one and then we'll link and pin this one perfect and now we just got to bring betsy all the way around link up everything and then we should be good to go get some cordwood so we're probably gonna have to fuel up betsy at some point here how are we doing? 80, uh, water. Yeah, we got, like, no fuel. We need some firewood. So we'll have to do that. We'll fill up with water. We only got 87 water as well. But, uh, it's okay. I did do some remodeling of the shunt yard. As you'll notice, this turn is way bigger now. I actually reduced it. It's only a 20-degree turn now instead of a 30-degree turn or 34 or whatever the heck it was. So this should be perfect for the larger scale engines. And you can see I cleared out the trees here. So this actually leaves a lot more space for shunting. I realized I probably could have put... Like the whole round table area in here or something but i don't mind where the round table is because you know you grab your engines you grab your cars and you go off so it kind of makes sense to be over there but either way we'll make some shunting lanes that come off this and you know come back up this way on the other side of the freight depot um but i definitely enjoy having this as a nice wide turn now it just feels a lot safer and when we get into the bigger train engines i think this is going to be like crucial to have these nice turns. I also love the view of this. It's going to be great when we have more lanes and stuff. Because the view, this looks so great. Like this view of just all these different trains. It's starting to feel more like a train yard, you know? And we need more trains. Like we don't don't have enough trains yet. But uh, of course the big crutch in this game is you need money. Money is like huge. And we need better products to make more money. So we got to get some cordwood to the smelter. I just wanted to do it today just to try it out. And of course, to set up the smelter loop. So we're going to set up the whole smelter loop today. Because we're going to need that to get this car turned around and brought back up. So I think that's important. And then after that, we're going to have to go to the iron mine. So we can actually start getting iron to the smelter. And boom, done. And start selling that valuable iron stuff. I feel like iron at the freight depot is going to sell for a fortune compared to anything else we've been doing. Which is just going to make life so much better. Alright, I think that's good enough. That's filling. And we'll just fill up on firewood. Alright, perfect. Everything's looking good. Throw some wood on the fire. Excellent. For this, I'm going to just actually do some manual driving. Just because we got to do some shunting. So we'll get you going. Then we got to go up here and switch some switches over. To get it into the depot lanes. I always love doing my shunting completely manually. I find it's easier to let your engine push into the cars. You can latch them while they're moving and stuff. Uh, doing it automatically or doing it from like the menu where it always breaks your car when you get out of it. It's kind of difficult. Um, but see here we can actually do some switching and the porter should just be coming over here. And then as soon as it gets past this we'll jump on board flip it back. Excellent. I'm hoping Betsy can handle six cordwood cards on a 3% grade. By the way, I realized last episode I said degrees for the whole thing, and then I actually worked it out. So I looked it up what percentage grade means, because I really didn't know. And apparently it's like the total percentage of height over distance. So if you go up one foot over 100 feet, that would be a 1% grade, which uh, totally makes sense. And also this is totally not set the way we need to go. 
There we go. Slam on that. Perfect. But anyway, so it'd be like 1% would be going up one foot or one meter over 100 meters, right? It's 1% of height over distance, which makes sense. And then I think if you work that out, it ends up being like 5.5 degrees is a 3% or something like that. So like 3 over 100 is 5.5 degrees. I'm not sure. I can't remember the math. But it, it isn't 3 degrees. It's not an exact lineup so three percent is actually steeper than three degrees and then i was reading online too and apparently like 1.8 is considered high for trains so like 1.8 percent apparently in standard north american rails is like aggressive and anything above 1.8 percent is like mountain grade so you know here we are at three percent kind of laughing at that so you know whatever as long as it works and we can make it there safely I'm not too worried about it. it. To be honest, we have to go 3% the whole way down. If we did that at like 1.8% or 1.5, it'd be twice the distance. So we'd need to like spiral the whole thing back a couple times, which I just think would be absolutely insane. Uh, You need a link, right? Yeah, perfect. Let's go slow. We're going to slam this one. And then, yeah, it's going to, it doesn't matter. It has no brakes, but this one has brakes. So it'll slam into that, slam into that. And then we turn you off. Or we just, you know, just jam it off the track. That works too. Sure, why not? Pin that. Perfect. Doesn't really matter. There's like these kind of like these stoppers here at the back. A little bit. So even if you jam it up. See, we've got it. We've got it. It doesn't matter. It's just going to pull right back onto the track. It shouldn't be a big deal. Turn this one off. Alright. Pull our porter forward. That's why I like to do shunting this way, because then you can actually, you know, as it's pulling those cars away, you can work the brakes on the other cars, flick the switches and all that stuff. It's kind of easier, in my opinion. Back it up. Can't tell anymore. These are awesome. These cars, I can't wait till we're running box cars too, and like the coal cars and stuff. It can't even see out the back of the train. This is fantastic. This is so good. We'd actually need like people to tell us which direction the switches are in. That's amazing. All right, we're good though. Reduce that down to like 0%. Honestly, we can just coast at this point. We're going to have momentum. Excellent. There's a switch on this. Perfect. So we're linked up. Again, no break on this one. Break on the back one. It should just... This probably isn't how they would shunt in real life. Because I feel like that's a little violent. But like, we can just hitch that. Hitch that. There we go. Excellent. And then this will just jam up against the wall. Okay. A little, a little bit aggressive. All right. Check all the brakes. Make sure they're all off. Perfect, perfect. Yep. 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 And yeah, awesome. Perfect. We're moving. Let's go get some cordwood and then bring it down to the smelter. And then set up some lines. So we're actually going to drive this in first person for a little bit. Probably the whole way. Um, because I was running plank cars and I know I'm going to need to flip pretty much every switch on the route here. Starting with that first one. So we're going to set up the first one to come back into the freight depot. Which means we're going to get off the engine, wait till the whole train passes through it, and then jump back on at the back of the train and run our way back up to the engine. And then we're going to have to do the same for like the lumber mill turn off, and get to the sawmill first, and then go to the lumber mill. It's just going to be a lot of switching. So it's a lot easier if you're just driving sort of like this, where you can kind of see the switches jump off and let the train keep rolling. Because getting the train started every time, that's what takes all the energy. But you do have to slow down if you, you know, you have the train going faster than you can run. That's kind of an issue, but we should be good here for a bit. Alright, so we're coming up to this switch. So what I want to do is just hop off here. Wait until this train passes. It seems a little quick. Hopefully we can jump on it. And as soon as this back car passes, we gotta flick this and then get on. So like that. Which it did. Perfect. And then we hop on. So now when we come back, we'll go into the freight depot line and we won't go into the engine spawning area, which is fine. Uh, we're gonna have to slow this down a little bit. She's cruising a bit quick. It's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be a little bit difficult to flip this next switch up here because this is taking us to the sawmill we got to go left to the lumber mill first and then flip back around and come to the sawmill side so gonna be uh, a little bit of switching going on all right so i think this next switch coming around the corner goes up a hill and then it comes down to the sawmill and it's gonna be taking us right so i need to flick that one so we'll put our brake on actually we can probably just reduce the regulator now and let the hill slow us down there we go maybe that's too much 
Oh, okay. I just jumped off the train. That's fine. No worries. We'll just run ahead. All right. So we're getting this switch. Perfect. Betsy's going to go. I might as well honestly run down to the, the Y here and flick this one. Because we're going to be coming back in from the logging camp side. And I think we might have time. Either that or we're going to show up and Betsy's going to be derailed at the next switch. But hopefully we'll be okay. This is this is good here. So flick this one. Right? Perfect. So that one will come from the logging camp side. Oh no, Betsy's. Oh no, Betsy's going to beat me to the switch. Oh no, 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 no. Oh, we're screwed. Oh, well. Well, guess we're re-railing Betsy, and then hooking her all back up. Yeah, unless by some miracle that switch is set correctly, uh, which it's not. Yeah, no, that's, that's a GG. That's, uh, yep, 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 that's, yep. Sometimes it's, uh, sometimes it's good to, uh, drive your train the normal way. Yep. Alright, well, let's just grab Betsy, and, uh, yeah, it's fine, Betsy. Don't worry about it. We'll just pretend like nothing happened. It must have picked up some speed coming down that little hill there. I thought we'd have time to get over to the Y, and no, I should have flipped this switch first, and then and gone done the Y stuff, and see, that was, that was my mistake. That was user error, once again. They're gonna, there's gonna be an investigation into this, and they're gonna 100% blame the operator. I can already see it now. Alright, conveniently, this car is just rolling down the hill. Um, so that's good. Perfect. Is it going to be enough to push this into the engine? That would be absolutely awesome. Oh, look at that. Wonderful. Perfect. Now let's back Betsy up and get the rest of the train. And we'll pretend like this never happened. No one noticed. It'll be amazing if they add damage to engines in this, so derailing actually has consequences. Like, right now, the only consequence of derailing is you need to get the server host to come and actually, you know re-rail everything because random people can't just re-rail it only the guy running the server can do it but other than that like there's no there's no financial cost to having your train get wrecked where if there was i feel like that would very much change um you know the gameplay just a little bit you would have to be much more careful and you'd, you'd probably end up honestly just having to reload like way more saves and stuff well let's just put this in a little bit of reverse okay apparently a little bit more than seven percent thank you just need to... This is apparently on a little bit of a hill. Well, let's just back it up. Pin it. Perfect. Open this brake up. Excellent. And I think these ones don't have brake. Yeah, they're good. Alright, let's go forward and get out of here. Alright, made it to the lung camp. No problem. Didn't derail. Not an issue. Um, only complete noobs would derail a train on a relatively straight track. But the logging camp's got a nice little loop, so the switch really doesn't matter. We just gotta remember to flick it before we leave. And this loop, I actually, to be honest, might have to remake as well. I think this is only like a 25 degree loop, which I guess the bigger engines could probably do it. No problem. I mean, maybe some of them might have a struggle with it and kind of derail themselves, but... I think this one's sharper than 20 degrees. I try to keep the loops at like 20 degrees max, because I heard that that was like a good number. Uh, 20 degrees over 100 feet per corner. But we are also running like mountain trains, so it's kind of difficult to get that everywhere. But anyway, we're going to load up cordwood. It's all on this side. Never loaded cordwood before. Kind of excited. Don't really know how much goes per car. There we go. Perfect. It's just... Oh, I might actually... Uh, might have missed it there. Hopefully that can load the first car. Whoops. Might have to back up just a little bit. Alright, so cordwood's gonna be probably, I would assume, eight. Looks like it's four on the bottom, and then it's gonna be four on the top. Is that right? Because it's like two and then two, or it's only gonna be four. I feel like these cars are really tall, though, so it's gonna be eight. That would make sense. Actually, I can just look at the car. Yeah, one of eight. Perfect. Alright. So we're gonna have stacks of eight. That's probably gonna be relatively heavy. Going down a 3% grade. And this is six cars. I mean, we're not going to use any engine going down the path. But, like, you know, it's probably going to push us. We, I mean, we could always, worst case scenario, turn on some trailer brakes, some car brakes on a bunch of the different train cars and have them assist with the, you know, the down sloping and not just use the engine brakes. But I'm going to try doing it with just the porter brakes and have it kind of hold everything up as it slides down the hill. I'm not worried the 3% grade or whatever, the hill is at 
pretty good spots where there's not too many sharp corners, I feel. So it'll probably be okay. But anyway, let's load this all up and then uh, get going. See how heavy all this cordwood is. This is six cars of cordwood, which I think is excessive. But, you know, who knows? We'll see what happens. All right, the last car is being loaded. Uh, I'm starting to realize six cordwood cars is kind of heavy. So, you know, Betsy can hold it on the hill here, it seems. So hopefully we'll be fine going down the 3%. I feel like we will. The 3% is just, it's really, really long. So we just got to maintain control the whole distance. Already have the switch set here, so we should be good to go. Just going to coast for a little bit down this hill. I should really adjust this to the whole sawmill entrance thing I think could be reworked. This corner here, it's a little, it's got a little bit of a hook there that seems a little sharp. Could easily loosen that up a little bit. Like, look at that. That car came up on two wheels almost on that corner. So I think this all needs to be reworked. This whole section, to be honest, I'd like to put the switch closer up top too. So it's, you don't have to run all the way down here to make sure the switch is changed. But, you know, that's, that's future improvements. Not really a big deal. We're just cruising now. I mean, to be honest, Betsy hauls stuff pretty easily. So, you know, six cordwood should be good. We're going to have to build an actual drop-off point for the smelter. Right now, there's no actual spot for us to put the cordwood yet. Uh, like, there's a station platform there, but we don't have track going up to the station platform. So we're going to have to build that and then build the smelter loop. I did build a single switch at the smelter. I spent some time putting a switch into the corner right at the bottom of the ramp. So it's already set up to get a loop put in. Uh, it's just a matter of actually building the loop okay we gotta just hold on here let's just you know we're not gonna make this mistake again let's let the train stop this should be fine perfect excellent and now we're gonna run it just in first person for a little bit just because i'm not sure the sawmill switches are gonna be set to go to the smelter path so let's just get going a little bit get some pull and then bring her back so the switch up ahead, I can't tell because there's a tree blocking it. It is set correctly. We are going to the right. That's exactly what we want. Yeah, we want to go to the right here. Perfect. But the switch ahead of that is not set correctly. So we're going to have to pull it back on the regulator a little bit. Probably honestly can just coast up here. Yeah, and then let's sprint up to this one and set this switch to go to the smelter. And then we can hop in. This I eventually want to bypass. This is like the drop-off point for wood, and eventually we're going to need this as a through track for like smelter, iron, and all that sort of thing. Like cordwood going down and iron coming up, so eventually we're going to have to, you know, move this all out of the way. But for now, it works pretty good. I do want to start, you know, making some main lines, quote-unquote, but I think I want to actually like connect all the industries up first before I worry about, you know, improving the infrastructure. As long as we can get everywhere we need to go without having to do stupid train maneuvers, I think we're fine. For now, anyway. All right, this is sick. This is the first time this track's going to run fully loaded. It, you know, big step up. We went two cars empty, and now we're going to six cars fully loaded. We're, oh, we're losing water temp. I should probably put the fire up. We have no fire. It doesn't matter. We're honestly going to coast the whole way down anyway. We can really just burn off the rest of this boiler pressure. I think once we pass this bridge, there's a little dip down. And then after that, it's like that one flat section, and then it's just coasting the whole way. At this point, we might actually do, at some point, a switch off here that goes back direct to the freight depot. If you're coming up with iron, there's no reason you should have to go all the way to the sawmill to loop back to the freight depot. You could just do a straight switch off and go straight there, although we have to avoid this mountain. So we'd have to, you know, just loop around that mountain. But I'm sure we could make a more direct path to the freight depot that doesn't, that doesn't include the sawmill. Just for those, you know, through trains, if you want to call it that. All right, here we go. No reg. We're just coasting. I'm going to go 20% break to start. We're on the 3% now, for sure. Oh, yeah. She is... She's moving. You know, it seems, it seems pretty good at 20%. 20% break seems like a decent number. Shouldn't pick up any more speed than we're doing now. And just, you know, we should just be able to ride this down the whole way. Pretty cool. This is actually awesome. Alright, I feel like I can go to, let's go to 10% break. I feel like, I feel like we can, 11% sure, whatever. 
Can I go to can I also go to zero percent break? What happens if I just free free coast it? I don't know if we're ever gonna actually pick up enough speed for it. Seems like we're picking up a little bit. It's not that bad though. Is, is it because this is what if I go to zero? A lot of people were saying the reverser is like a gear. If you have your reverser at zero, it's basically like being in neutral. I don't really know, to be honest. I don't know too much about how steam train mechanics like that work. It doesn't seem to make a difference. This actually is... I can't believe this is working at 0% break. It's just... It doesn't even care. It doesn't seem like we're picking up that much extra speed either. And these are like gradual enough turns that... I mean, this, this turn coming up might be a little sharp. But even then, is it though? Like... Not... Not really. This is awesome! Man, if we could just coast... Oh, okay, we're getting a little bit of the wobbles. Okay, that was a little... But seriously though, if we can just coast this whole way down, this is actually kind of amazing. I'm gonna slow it down a little bit here because we are getting to the bottom. Oh, this is so cool. I love this path. And we're all the way at the back of the smelter. I need to cut down more trees though. It's uh, I wanted to leave more trees here because it's more of like a wilderness path, but it is aggravating on the camera. You see the camera clip through all these trees all the time. It's not bad if you keep the camera up. So here we go. This is the switch I added. It goes to the left, and this gives us, you know, a little bit of runoff space. So we can do a loop around the smelter, which we're going to have to do because we want to connect up the other two stations. And then here, we're now at the smelter. But here's the interesting part. This drop-off station is for iron ore, which obviously we don't have yet. So we can have a big iron train. And the drop-off station for cordwood isn't in a line. It's over here. Which I think is rather interesting. So, what we essentially need to do, which... I'm assuming when we drop off iron, it's going to make a big pile of it right here. So we can't really have our track come further back than that. So all we can really do is build a track either on this side or this side, right? And it's just like a reverse in stop point where you just back in and you unload the cars. Now, I didn't really think this through because I have six cars. And those six cars can't exactly all fit here. We can only go back so far. So we're going to have to actually break this up into like probably two sets of three and do it in groups of three at a time and do a big old swap a I feel like it's going to make a cordwood pile right here when we unload it, right? The game, it shows zero of a hundred, but it makes piles of objects like it does with the lumber mill and stuff. And there's probably going to be a coal pile there. So we need to keep our track on this side and back it up. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to go forward more, then make a switch that comes back. Uh, into a siding here and then we just have to basically detach the back three cars um no bring the back three cars in first unload them bring them forward bring them back detach them yeah this will work we just need a single switch off so let's just start by uh, putting down some groundwork that comes off here and just go straight forward for a bunch i don't know something like that i think that's going to be good enough we just need enough room to, you know, be able to get to the switch. We're going to start turning right away, and then we need to get all the way around to those station platforms on that side with the loop, and then come back out at the switch so we can go out straight. So this will be easy enough, but we got to go straight first and put a switch to go into a little lane. So let's just keep this going straight with the good old crossover trick. Link to the back, link to the front, press alt, something like that. It's probably far enough, and then we're going to put a switch on the front end of that that leads backwards into the shunt lane and then we'll loop off this switch so let's put a switch just as a placeholder do the old switch flipperoo put a crossover piece does it what perfect crossover piece switch back uh let's put it this way there we go excellent so that's perfect and then we can demolish this and of course I like to relink this track I don't know if it really matters or not because you know it was placed on a link but then the link was deleted and placed back I just relink it anyway just in case it makes a difference I'm not sure don't want to accidentally eat some trains all right perfect and then I want this switch to actually like flip back so we're just gonna do it like this um because then that'll make this parallel 
right? And we can just go like this with this crossover piece. And I'm pretty sure that means these two lines are then parallel, right? If I go like this. They look, they look pretty parallel. Yeah, perfect. So we'll delete that after, but uh, for now we're going to do that. And then we just need to actually foundation all this up. Uh, actually, we're going to have to bring this over closer to the station. So let's just go back with some straight pieces first. I'm just going to build it all like this for now because, you know, it's not a very big section to build. And we don't actually... Oh, yeah, we need to come back even further. We need to go further ahead with that switch. But we don't need to build foundation this way. We can just kind of place all this for now and then come back after the fact and, you know, put foundation underneath it. So I'm just going to build it this way. If you build it with rails using the alt key, the rail still sticks to, like, the ground below it. So you still need to place groundwork first. You can always place temporary groundwork and then come back and fix it later. But, you know, it's just something you got to think about. Whereas if you do it this way, um, you don't need any groundwork whatsoever. This is getting close. Uh, this is getting close to the point where it, it slopes back up, which I'm not a huge fan of. Alright, so we can probably go back to there. Just a little shy of this. We can add an extra little bit at the end of that. So that's perfect. That'll be a good little shunt lane off. So let's actually demolish some of these trees. Put the groundwork down for this. And then we gotta curve this back around and make it to that other side um, where the... Where the other stations are. I hope this is enough space. This hill starts to go up like right away. But I think we'll be fine just to curve the track. Without having to increase its height at all. Alright well unfortunately. This foundation runs into the hill here. And I really don't want to have the train come up a hill. While it's shunting. So I think what I'm actually going to do. Is have this start turning in first. And then we're going to put the switch. Like midway on the turn. Straight off this guy. And that'll just give us. A whole lot more, uh, you know, flexibility on this corner. So we're just going to take this switch straight back, which is unfortunate. And uh, we're just going to build this out straight and it'll be perfect. Just straight from here, straight out, hit up the switch and uh, boom, good to go. Alrighty, so I've gone ahead and connected up the switch line to the loop. It's a pretty basic loop. This is actually nice and gradual. But here, believe it or not, uh, we got the switch coming in now across this way, which is fine. But I still needed to do a 25 degree corner. The hill there comes up pretty quick on that side of the smelter as well. So to keep it on flat terrain and not have to bring it up, it's actually a 25 degree turn. But I think it looks gradual enough. It, it might be okay for the bigger trains. If not, we might have to do some rerouting later but i just want to finish clearing out this area uh mainly because i kind of like it when you know you've got a building that's in its own little clearing it sort of makes sense you've got a smelter you know burning stuff you're burning i guess cordwood down to melt iron so you probably wouldn't want that surrounded by a bunch of trees you know but anyway we're gonna just delete these trees clear this out looks kind of nice that way and then we're going to try and unload all this cordwood and see how much money we can make from it we're definitely losing money from all this tree cutting. I've done a fair amount of that today. What are we down to? 620. Oh yeah, that's right. We bought a bunch of cars too. That's right. We are super poor. I forgot. That's right. Six cars, which is like what? 275 a piece. Almost 300 bucks. So there's almost 1800 bucks there. You know, that's, that's just, that's a lot of money. All right. Well, we're going to have to run some cordwood. And then we're going to have to run some more planks. And then I'm going to have to build the route all the way to the iron mine. And then make some serious cash bringing iron but this route now theoretically would let us bring iron all the way back to the freight depot if we in fact had a raw iron hookup to get here so all we really need is the raw iron and then we're good to start making some serious cash but look at that wonderful smelter area nice and clear we'll probably end up putting some extra shunting stuff around here some you know shunt lines to store cars that sort of thing i'm assuming at some point we're gonna make a split off here another switch type deal to store more cordwood cars but let's see if we can actually unload this so my thought is we unload the back three first and then we drive forward and unhitch the back three onto this line and then load up the front three and then re-hitch up the whole train and bring it back to the freight depot that's my thought although i guess technically we should just bring it back to the logging camp but we'll go back to the freight depot for now um and then we'll park it in one of the shunt lines we have there so we just go through this, nice and easy, and we just got to coast all the way through, and then flick that switch. Now, I am going to do this in full manual, because we can't accidentally overshoot the track. That would be really bad. So, 
We gotta be super, super careful about not overshooting this and uh, derailing ourselves. Can barely even see, so it's like, oh man, it is. Uh, this is gonna be a tough one. I mean, really, I need to make a stopper. I mean, I really hope they add stoppers soon. It seems like it would be a logical thing to do because you can have dead end tracks that way and not have to build up these foundations. But uh, yeah, adding a stopper, I think, would be super beneficial. Let's just slow this up even more. Extremely slow. The only problem with this, too, is when we're unloading cordwood, we're literally blocking all the iron trains from picking up iron. So we'd have to deal with that logistical nightmare if we wanted to unload cordwood while running iron trains. But I mean, I feel like when we get to that point, we might have multiple tracks for all this anyway. Okay, I think that's it. I think maybe a little more. Just a little bit more. We do have a little bit of excess track. Alright, perfect. That's probably good enough. And then we can unload these three. So let's check how much money we've got. $580. Yeah, I think this one will still be good. Perfect. And we do have some extra space. So we grab this. Uh, there we go. Nice. Perfect. Excellent. This one too. And this one as well. So that's three cars unloaded. Yeah, and you can see it makes a cordwood stack here. So I imagine when we get up to 100 cordwood, this whole thing will be completely full, which means if we had track here, it would be a nightmare. And same thing with the coal there. So we can't block this. Um, although, to be honest, if we ran track here, there might not even be an unload there. It might not even work. It might just disappear. But regardless, we're going to keep the track on the outside because that makes the most sense. So now we got to do the funny business. So we're actually going to do this in first person. We go break, a little bit of rag, pull that forward. Then we get ready to flick this switch once it's cleared it. And then we have to detach the back three cars, shunt them out of the way, put the other three cars into the place, unload them, and then we're good to go. This is an interesting setup that the devs put here. They didn't put it in a line. They just put it actually off to the side, which I think is super interesting. It kind of forces you to do some shunting, which I like. But I, it also means that I don't think I would run a train longer than six cars, though, because I don't think you could fit more than three very easily in there and uh you know if we're running more than six that's just that's just a lot of you know shunting that you have to do to rearrange the cars although we could have sections of three so for example i could have three cordwood cars that are empty here and we pick up empties bring them back and bring down full ones or something but um it doesn't really matter too much all right so we just gotta back ourselves past the switch point Again, this would all completely block the main line if someone was trying to run iron at the same time. So it might be something at some point that gets changed in order to accommodate an iron train while you're trying to deal with the cordwood problem. Although I have a feeling cordwood's not going to get replenished that often. I feel like if the devs, you know, put this kind of a cutoff for the cordwood, they wouldn't expect you to replenish it every time you bring iron loads. But I'm not exactly sure. I just, I feel like we're going to go through a lot more iron than we do cordwood. So anyway, we want to hitch this. Right, and we can just put the brake on one of these cars. Doesn't really matter. And then we just gotta bring this guy forward just the slightest little bit. So we're gonna go back again, do this in first person. Just a little bit of, little bit of regulator. Get it going. Perfect. And then let's bring that down even more. 7%. That'll be fine. And then once Betsy's clear, we just gotta flick this back over. Unload these three, then pick everything up, drive out the loop, and get out of here and head back up. And this time we'll actually be going up forwards, which is sweet. So we'll actually be pulling everything up rather than pushing it. So there we go. Flick that switch. Come in here. Slam some brakes. Hit some reverser. Crank that up. Go like that. Perfect. Bring this back down. Actually, you know what? We should probably do this in first person so I can get a good view. Once we have stoppers, I think I'll do a little bit more of, uh, you know, the first person shunting into lanes like this. I mean, it's not too bad. Even when I'm trying to do the shunting lanes back at the freight depot, I find it's difficult to line up the last car with where it needs to be so you have enough range. I always end up overshooting it and then having to go back and, like, you know, back up the train just the slightest little bit to make everything work. But either way, this is pretty good. This is actually not too bad. Three at a time, I think, is it's a good number. Six total. We could do nine, but then we'd have to double shunt, you know, split the train into three. It'd be an, And we need an extra lane to do that, actually, right? Because we'd have to do the back three. Or no, I guess you just do the back three, unload them, do the next three, unload them onto the same lane, and just keep reassembling the empty train. But that's just more and more shunting every time you have to do it. This delivers 
6 times 8, so 48 logs each time. So that's not bad. All right. I think we had $580 before. Now we're up to 1060 so just under 500 bucks, 480 bucks, 10 bucks a cordwood. It's not bad. It's a good price. We could do another whole load of six, and then this would be full pretty much, 96. And then we'd be good to go. All right. I'm going to turn this brake off. Betsy's coming in pretty slow, but we're going to just hitch this live. There we go. Excellent. And now we should be able to just flip Betsy around. Pull forward. Pull brake. Let off the brake. 16%. Perfect. And now Betsy is going to start moving that way with the whole load, right? Yes. Excellent. And I'm going to go flick this switch. Then we're going to pick up Betsy. And just jump on and head back up to base camp. This is awesome. I really like the way this looks. I like it when you've got like the building, you can see everything around it. You've got, you know, this is like a clearing. I feel like if you were going to put a smelter in the middle of nowhere, you'd at least clear the trees out and, you know, run more lines. So we're definitely going to have to have extra lines for this, especially when we start running iron. I feel like this place is going to get rather busy. Uh, but here we go. Let's flick this switch. Perfect. And let's go get back on Betsy. All right, let's crank this thing up. I think we're going to need a little bit more than, like, the 10% or whatever we were at before uh, we make it up this hill. Uh, oh, we got no fire. Okay, hold on. We got water. We need some fire. Let's get the fire going. I should have left this driving. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We need the fire. Perfect. Fuel's good. We should make it up the hill as long as our water temp doesn't drop too much. Oh, no, the water temp's still going up. Okay, fantastic. We're good. Let's go 30%. Six cars. I don't, I don't think it'll be a struggle. They're empty, to be honest. I think if we start running iron, the Betsy might not cut it. But, you know, we'll definitely have to try that at some point. What? I literally flicked this switch. Wait, was it? It was already flicked and I flicked it the wrong way? Oh my god. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Oh, I'm such an idiot. I didn't even check. I just instinctively flicked it to the opposite direction it was, and it was actually already set the right way. You gotta be, all right. Well, that's, that's unfortunate. Betsy, you're just, it's just, I'm sorry. It's been a letdown today, and it's not your fault. You're doing so well, Betsy. All right, perfect. Now we just gotta link Betsy up to everything, and then we should be good to go this time. I can't believe- I need to check switches more often. That was such a stupid mistake. I literally was like, ah, oh, you gotta flip the switch, because we were coming in this way, so the switch must be that way. I must have flipped it sometime without even thinking, or like, you know, while I was in the middle of changing the track around and not remember doing it, and, you know, here we are. For like the 16th time we're re-railing engines. Thank goodness the devs don't have a consequence for re-railing engines yet. I would be flat broke if it cost money. Alright, my cars are just rolling away. That's good. Uh, let's just get rid of that piece. Nope. Get rid of that. Excellent. Perfect. Hitched in. Pull forward. Pull brake. All our cars stop. Excellent. Brake off. Whoops. Forward on. Brake off. Give it some reg. All right, drop her to 30%. We're good this time, right? Switch is set, the switch is set. Excellent, okay. No more derailing till the end of the episode. That's the plan. All right, wonderful. Perfect. Get into this nice turn. Thirty percent, guys. Are we going to bog down? Doesn't sound like it is, actually. Sounds pretty good at 30%. The water level's a little low. Which is unfortunate. How's the fire doing? Fire's burning. That's good. Awesome. This is so cool. The first-person camera is a little jittery, unfortunately, but I, I, it is really cool to ride in first-person. You really get that feeling for, like, you know... Being on the edge of a cliff. Look, there's the smelter track down there. You can see the drop-offs. I'm not going to demolish all these trees, though. I kind of like the look of that. But there's the drop-offs all down there. The smelter clearing. 
is perfect. I wonder if we're actually going to be able to see the clearing from up top. I imagine we will because the trees render really far away. But, oh, that looks cool. Once we have some shunt yards there too and some extra cars being stored there. Okay, we're bogging down now. How are we doing? We got steam pressure, 125. We got water enough for now. It bogs down at 30. There's 41. Now we're cruising now again. Got all the cars still. Perfect. This is so cool. I, I'm really, really looking forward to doing more crazy mountain passes throughout this game. There's uh, definitely some cool spots in this map that I have yet to explore, and I'm really excited to have some, you know, passes quite literally on the edge of a cliff. I mean, this one kind of goes up the edge of a cliff here, you know, and it's got this little metal bridge ramp or whatever to get up to the edge of the cliff that it runs on, but it's not nearly as cliff edge as, you know, I want some drop-offs that are just... I mean, I guess, yeah, this would kind of suck if the train derailed up here, but... Perfect. Still got all the cars, and we're still moving. This thing hauls. All right. Making it to the top of the hill. This is my favorite part. I love this, the look of the concrete on the edge of the thing with some, like, you know, this would be like a runoff, like, bridge, you know? Water would kind of flow underneath it, stuff like that. So you wouldn't necessarily wash out your track. This part looks pretty cool, too. You got just the foundation running right on the edge of the cliff. It's constantly going down, so we're just constantly steaming up, but, you know. It would suck to have your engine lose power on this, like, if we ran out of water. That would, that would be a huge problem. This actually is crazy. This trip, we filled up right before we left, and this trip took the whole 500 water. So if we were doing multiple loads of this, I mean, we could put a watering tower by the smelter, which, to be honest, we probably should. I should probably have a watering tower at every drop-off point. That would just make sense. You do a fuel depot at everyone, too, but generally speaking, you don't really need to fill up with firewood that often. Like, we still have firewood left over. Not a lot, but we do have a bunch. But, uh, yeah, the water, we probably should just have a, a water tower at every location a sanding tower too but you know we haven't even used the sander once yet this whole trip it's just been without the sander which is crazy mind you when we start pulling iron up i think that's where we're going to need the sander because you're going to be pulling weight up the whole hill and i think that might be a tough thing for the cars to do we're almost at the sawmill now we're gonna have to slow up a little bit I do want to take this back to the freight depot I am going to unload these cars. I want to make a little bit more money, so to do that, I'm going to run more planks. I mean, we could only run, we could run one more load of cordwood, and then the smelter's going to be full, and we're not going to be allowed to run cordwood until we get iron. So, going to switch over and run some planks for a bit and make some money. I'd like to get a bigger engine so that we're not running Betsy all the way to the coal mine. I feel like it's going to be important to have some really big haulers. And then we're going to need money to buy all the coal cars as well. Like, you know, buying these cars just made us go broke. So, you know, let alone all the coal cars that we're going to need and other things. But going to head right back to the freight depot. We've got another lane to offload these into. Not a big deal. We have lanes in the shunt yard. And uh, we'll be able to just swap out and run some planks. That's such a cool trip, though. I love going all the way down to the smelter. It feels like you're in a whole different world when you're down in that valley. It's like, you know, it's such a, a distant way away from this side of the map. That it just feels really cool. And I'm sure it'll feel the same when we get way out to the coal mine and the iron mine and all that stuff. Well, we are almost completely bone dry on water. We're actually going to be losing boiler pressure as we come in. Um, that honestly shouldn't be too bad. There's like a, there's two water towers at the freight depot that we can use. And I can always place another one if we really have to. But that's insane. So this is the kind of train route that we definitely need to fill up at the smelter. Or at the logging camp as we come through the... Not the logging camp, the sawmill as we come through. Because there's a water tower at the sawmill. But yeah, we're out of water now. So now we're just burning down our boiler pressure. Alright, we're almost here. Switches should already be set. Regulator is basically screwed. We're going to bring it into the freight line. So we can actually, uh... You know, drop off this car load and make some more money with the planks. There's the water tower. We'll have to loop around and fill it up, or I'll, I'll probably have to honestly place another one here. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Definitely need to make some more money, get some better engines. I'm really excited with how the routes are coming along. I'm actually really, really happy with the smelter route now. It's nice to have a loop there. And uh, the cordwood is interesting, that drop-off point. But I think we made it work, and I'm pretty happy with how it's set up. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If you do like this series, make sure, of course, you let me know by hitting that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we'll see y'all next time. All right, Betsy.
You did good. You did good. 